What up, S fans? Stay focused and motivated. It's your boy Thurs Lynch up in this jet with another motherfucking video for y'all. S fam, stand up. S fam, salute. Get motivated up in this jet one time. Got another video for y'all. Super happy, man. I'm glad. Energy's up a little bit. I'm gonna give me some rest. After this one, I'm done for the night. Spend some time with the family, bro. Got a super early wake up, I believe, tomorrow. So, anyway, y'all, gotta give a big, big shout out to Airman Story. For hitting up that another another one, S Fam React, putting the links to the freaking videos in the comments. He put two of them up there this time. One of them we got Army Therapy, Admin versus Infantry, right? So I think I know a little bit about what the therapy is kind of like, right? So Big Drill Sergeant, before he became a drill sergeant, used to drink a lot, man. Used to drink a lot. Me and wife used to always argue all the time, and it always had me trying to freaking get my life together. I was rethinking my life and all this good stuff like that. So whenever that happened, I, I would go to the ASAP program. I'd go sit down and I'd go talk with the therapist for a little while. I think they're a therapist, whatever. But I'd go to the ASAP program and uh, you know what I'm saying? I'd get myself together, make sure I got myself under control and all that good stuff. So I think I have an idea of what therapy in the army is like. Now, y'all know that infantry's freaking they got the craziest stories that happen whenever they freaking go to go go down range and deploy and stuff like that. And then you got admin. You sitting up in your job is doing computer work all day and paperwork. What kind of therapy do you? This should be interesting. This should be interesting. Airman story. Appreciate you for hooking this one up, man. We getting ready to get into this. It's by a combat veteran, so y'all already know. Drew is crazy when he does his stuff. And then he got his boy up there. I can't remember. I think his boy's name is Brandon, if I can remember. I can't remember, man. But big, big shout out to the, to the old vets of the game doing their thing. Let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. First time to the page, y'all know what to do. Super fam, y'all know what to do. Let's go! Hi. I just want to thank you for coming in today. My name is Stacy. I'm going to be your counselor. Uh, I want you to know that this is a safe space. So anything that you say. Which one do y'all think? I think I think Drew's gonna be the admin, and I think I think that's his name, man. I think his part. I think I think his boy is gonna be the infantry. I don't know. It's just hard to say. What he's gonna... All right, let's go, man. I'm not going to share with anyone else. All right. So, would you like to tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm Sergeant Barrius, and uh, I'm an S1. S1, I knew it. Myrtle, I just really, I just want to thank you for your service. Appreciate uh, everything you guys do for us. You're welcome. Is there anything? That's a crazy, like, I don't know, man. Infantry, they don't, they're not really big headed about their stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, they know that, that, that they go hard. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. Let's keep it moving, man. Thing in particular that's bothering you. Uh, I deployed in 2016. What did you do years. when you deployed? <laughs> And uh, I was in Bagram, Afghanistan. That's one of the it's best places to freaking be, man. Which means the threat level is higher. And what happened on that deployment? Motors. We we had about one motor a day. You know, you, I don't know if you know what motors are, but they're they're rockets that that fall from the sky. And they do whistling and, noise. And their intended purpose is to kill or hit an infrastructure on the uh, on the base. Me and my friend and I went to the beach the other day. Uh, we were throwing that Nerf ball, you know, the one that makes a noise. There you go, look. We had a guy come up to us and ask us, I guess, politely to stop doing it. Because he was, said it sounded like a mortar. He was going through some stuff. The funny thing about mortars is when, when it hits close to you, you actually hear it spinning. Mm. The mortar go before it impacts. So what would you do when these mortars would come in? So what I guess what he's trying to say is that guy had no idea what he was talking about. I don't know. All right, let's go, man. Run to a bunker. You would run. Crawl. Mm -hmm. I would. Um, is he lying? Okay, so like I would run. So you would crawl, but in the running position. How the hell do you do you that, bro? Run while you're crawling. Run in the. <laughs> okay. So you're. Uh... Okay. Well, you uh, spoke about the mortars a little bit. I assume that means you've been to uh, to combat. Come on, man. Yeah, for nonchalant he is. How he just calm he is about it, person. 
I mean, I guess. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about your experiences uh, in the last four deployments? No. Oh, he was? How many times? I experienced an IED. Oh my goodness. Why yeah. don't you tell Look me about what happened? Training tells me that uh, if you see a rock, usually IEDs are buried under rocks. So the thing about it, man, this is the thing, right? This admin dude is made, S1 is making it so, it's it's such a crazy thing, you know what I'm saying? But when you got infantry and they're used to that, so that's a normal thing happening. That's why he's so chill about it. Like, yeah, yeah I get, you know, force a lot. Yeah, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. I've been deployed too, but I've only been deployed one time. And there's some crazy stuff did happen on my deployment. I'll say that much. All right. Keep it moving, y'all. So, training was right. We see an IED. Possibly. Possibly. So my uh, squad leader says. So his, his bright idea, my squad leader's bright idea, is that he's going to get out and kick the IED. Oh, my goodness. Come on, man. He wants to kick the that, IED. No, come on. And that was traumatizing to watch and experience. Uh, but you seem to have had an especially traumatic uh, combat experience. And One watch guy was burning leg. alive in the truck and the other guy lost his leg. So See how he just hit around his leg, make sure he didn't bleed out. Couldn't say if the guy was burning, obviously, but I've seen. That's how you use a tourniquet. When someone is bleeding, when the blood is coming out, not because they have a bruise, not because they have a rug burn. Weirdos. Let's go, man. Sometimes. We did experience a casualty. Oh, oh no. What, uh, anyone that you knew? Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened? It's hard for me to talk about it, but, because he was a very close friend of mine. Um, See, but infantry don't mind. They just freaking talk about it. He rolled. He playing rolled. basketball. He rolled his knee playing basketball. Oh, oh I thought you meant, like, a combat casualty. He's in a combat zone. Yes. Get out of casualty. here, bro. It's Bagram. So you're experiencing hallucinations of your deceased friend. If I remember Bagram correctly, man, Bagram was like the vacation spot in Afghanistan. Like, if I remember correctly, like they have like swimming pools there. That's how what if I remember correctly, y'all now, alright? Back in 2010, 2011, when, when we were out around that same area, some of my battle buddies went over there. They said they had they, they had a good, to, that's what they said. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just wasn't as crazy over there. So, I don't know, man. If I remember correctly, there was like a palm tree or something. I don't know, man. Bottom, bro. That dude was a freaking a combat casualty because he rolled his ankle while playing basketball in the combat zone. Freaking S1. <laughs> Let's go, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see him. It's cool. You know, you just kick back, have a drink. Have a drink. Talk about talk about the good old days. You... Or you think they might say back to you. It's... Yeah. And, and and how often are you having this drink? Every couple hours. <laughs> you don't want to say. You don't want to say. <laughs> Let's uh, answer your question there, pal. <laughs> I see. Sweet. It, it's 11.30. What are you, a woman? Because it says in the back here, according to the Surgeon General, women should not drink alcoholic beverages. Is there a period at the end of that? It says something about pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been funny if yeah, just keep this out. the therapist would have drank some, bro. Okay. And uh, any, anything else that you experienced? Coddling the pillow. Look at him, coddling it. Oh my, so you experienced a, a dead corpse. Yeah, have you seen the size of a cow? I knew he was going to say uh, a freaking animal, uh, bro. Quite a big firefight, actually, this, this one time. And it turned out a lot of these guys were just farmers. They had uh, a bunch of livestock, so we had to kill all their livestock because, you know, they're... They were dead. They can't take care of them anymore. 
Um, so we take the, these guys out, you know, and then we have to tr drag all of their livestock to the side of the road. We we're hoping somebody would see it and like fleece it all up. And then there's a lot of cows and huge. That's dead crazy, cows bro. Everywhere. Oh, so are they kind of explaining? Cow. Yeah. I thought you were talking about humans. A human, bro. God no. We take the dead bodies that we killed, put them on the trucks, and we drove very slowly through all of the villages on the way back to the fob. Just to make a statement, you know, don't fuck with us. Wow, that's that's quite something. Uh, isn't it's, now that you're home, you don't have much to worry about when it comes to the shooting. Yeah, come tell me that on the 4th of July. When the fireworks are going off, and, and he see, he's considerate from the fireworks, he gets living, freaking maybe PTSD. A neighbor it's like a PTSD. That might be, you know, traumatized by the sound of fireworks exploding like me with the indirect ammo thing. I will say this one. There was a couple times when there was one, it was one 4th of July, only one of them, where the fireworks were going off. And it didn't, it wasn't traumatizing, but it felt freaking uncomfortable, man. It felt uncomfortable. And sometimes people say that like with PTSD, it doesn't even necessarily have to be you know what I'm saying? Something related to combat or something like that. Just you being in a stressful situation of being away from home and you're in a totally different country and just your, you know what I'm saying? Your living situation and stuff like that can be kind of traumatized. It still triggers different things and stuff like that. And I also remember there was one, there was a Christmas. Me and my wife were at the mall and it was just super crowded in there. And I felt something I just did not want to be in the store that my wife was in at that same time. And I remember the lady dropped a candle and the glass went everywhere and it just it just pissed me off, man. And I don't know, stuff like that just kind of makes me think of like PSD and PTSD and stuff like that. So let's see what these goofballs are still talking about, man. Let's go. And and the fireworks going off, I get triggered, so I have to hide. Yeah, hiding. And really you pop. And you're sitting in on your couch in your home or you're out watching the fireworks, or a neighbor like sets it off. It's like, oh, what? they're out there Same doing fireworks. Thing. Same, you know what I'm saying? Well, uh, I think we've we've covered a lot of ground here. There's a lot of things that you're dealing with. Um, I think that we definitely need to have more sessions so we can work on some some things. And uh, this is a brave step. This is a this is a big step for you. So um, let's say Thursday at uh, what is it? Eleven thirty again? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, it was lovely meeting you, Sergeant Myrtle. Yeah. Sure thing, Stacy. It's Stacy. Stacy. <laughs> traditional spelling. Whatever the fuck. Okay. Um. Let's say uh, next Friday at 11.30. I think we're good here. Just whatever you guys done. Check, whatever boxes you got to check there or whatever. Check, check those and uh, I'll be on my way. You can do, keep doing your thing. Okay, so uh, maybe we set up the date. How about no? Like, you want to take me out or something? Out back? You paying? You buying? You, is it, you, geez, you are a fucking woman, aren't you? <laughs> And your chain of command is supporting you on this? Uh, it's so long, man. Yeah. They said they're in full support of me in now. So I'm getting out. I said, whore. 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 I can't wait to not say that anymore. Whore. So happy, man. Yeah, when, when you're using your bayonet as a paperweight, I don't think you have a real say in anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That jump was funny, man. So just in case, we're just going to skip through the bloop. There's bloopers on the end of this video. So y'all go check out the original video. I'll put the link in the description of the original video. Y'all go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. And so y'all can see the bloopers at the end. But anyway, y'all, it's your boy Thurslings. I'm about to get up out of here, go spend some time with the fam after I edit and chop and screw this one up real quick. Thank y'all for checking me out. Thank you for airing the story, for hitting up that freaking hashtag SFamReact, putting that link to the video in the freaking comments. Y'all stay focused and motivated. Get motivated up in the day one time. SFam salute. SFam stand up. Superfam, check that freaking community tab. Go get your perks. Go get to see your videos before everybody else gets to see them.
Also, Superfan1, make sure y'all going to see the exclusive pictures That's that only y'all and Superfan2 get to see. Deuces, I'm out. Y'all have a great evening. I'm out.